Welcome back, Alf Hunters. Hopefully you're having a very tubular Tuesday because it is also election day. So if you're outside braving whatever storms or weather outside to vote in the U.S. elections, kudos to you. We uh, It's a very important day, so hopefully you did get out there and vote sometime during the day on Tuesday. We, you know, I'm, uh, okay, so for the next like day or so, I'll put out a video tomorrow. I usually don't on FOMC days, um, you know, kind of talking about mid-morning, but I'll put out a video tomorrow morning, kind of not to wrap up the, the, the election cycle, but to, just to kind of see what's going on as far as maybe some movement and fallout coming from the election. So I know we'll also have FOMC tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I will put out a video tomorrow, but I, you know, I usually don't, but it's, it's going to be one I'm not going to focus so much on, you know, the afternoon type stuff, but more of, you know, what's going on from the election, you know, what's moving from the election. As far as today, uh, seen a nice little bounce on the market, saw a little bit of a try to roll over yesterday afternoon. We did gap up a little bit today. Uh, obviously people are probably getting, putting positions in. You know, thinking certain political candidate candidates are going to get into office or whatever. So you know, you probably have some people trying to front front run uh, the election results, put capital work that kind of stuff. Typically, post election, you do get a little bit of a uptick in uh, the market, mostly because well, people want to know how to allocate capital, and you're waiting to see who's going to win before they put capital to work. And so, usually after the election's over, then you know, investors and uh, even companies and businesses know kind of where to allocate capital, how to how to best put capital to work. So uh, we'll see some of that tomorrow, but you're probably getting a little bit of that front running today. A uh, nice little gap up today, about a 0.12 or uh, about a 0.2 percent gap up there. Nice run here to start the day, first hour, 15 minutes or so, uh, past 15, 20 minutes, a little bit of a pullback. Uh, probably nothing crazy. Uh, I think that looks going to be more interesting on the daily. Uh, probably not a bad spot to maybe look to be bearish. I'll address that here uh, when we look at the daily time frame. As far as the cues, uh, so we got a little bit of an intraday switch going on, right? We got lower highs coming in here over the past hour on the cues, and the spy made higher highs. So that's that like intraday switch that. You know, you typically, you look for and it's like, okay, I'm going to follow the direction of the cues. Yeah, we'll see if that works out. I mean, it's a election day. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not probably not placing any day trading. IWM up on a pretty good gap down, actually up three quarters of a percent. Spy, spies up three quarters of a percent and the cues are up 0.9%. So, uh, everything's kind of up roughly in line. The DIA is up about 0.7%, about two thirds of a percent there. A uh, little bit of a gap up, nice run there, first hour 15. RSP, a little, little bit of a gap down, nice run, first hour 15, up 0.6%. So, this is the look on the daily that over the past couple of days, kind of talked about with that big breakdown that we did have last Thursday. You're looking for possibly a somewhat decent bounce into that breakdown area. Now we did get one Friday and we didn't continue to roll over. Actually, we did make a little bit of a lower low here on the RSP. So you do have a little bit of a retest spot here. You could say, hey, you know what? I did like the breakdown that we got late last week. I'm gonna be, say, I'm, I'm gonna be bearish on this breakdown. And, and the reason why I'm kind of hesitant to kind of say some of this is, I wouldn't do a full position. I wouldn't be like a full risk unit into being bearish. Okay. I would, I would do like a small scale guys. It's election and FOMC over the next day. So, so that's why I'm like, I, I just, I wouldn't, if you're going to be taking any kind of trading over the next couple of days, I would just have smaller sizes going. There's a lot of, there'd be a lot of volatility, a lot of changing, uh, decisions and stuff like that here over the next uh, day or two. That's that's the only thing I'm kind of going to say about that. DIA, nice little bounce today. Also into those moving averages. So that's, you know, some of those areas that it's like, yeah, those are areas that you want to see that retest and possibly be bearish on. IWM, yeah, 
not shocked here, bouncing off the 50 here over the past couple of days. Uh, doing pretty good. I, I would just rather be watching this for opportunities, not trying to play this for opportunities. Q's uh, currently up 1%. Did we just get a bounce in the market? We did get a little bit of a bounce there on the market. So the Q's are up 1%. Uh, we this, this thing had a big breakdown last week. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing maybe pushes a little bit higher. But also kind of like the retest and the moving averages. So outside of some of the volatile stuff, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad spot to maybe pick up some uh, a bearish position or so. Small, small positions. Um, spy, also. Uh, now, the other thing about, you know, post-election is kind of what I mentioned earlier. Uh, typically after elections, we do get a little bit of a run. Mostly because people know where to allocate capital. So very possible that we we will see that later this uh, for the rest of this week. Um, anyways, SPY also retesting into those moving averages. So that's kind of the look across some of those markets. Here's a look at the IYT. Uh, IYT looked pretty solid actually with that breakout that it had mid-October. And then, you know, you have these tops in here around the 69 level and you can see how much it... It kind of just came down and scooped right into this area. Kind of nicely, even a little double tap off of it, honestly. It looks pretty good. Uh, I'd be probably leaning a little bit more bullish there on the IYT. That looks pretty decent. Uh, wish I would have saw that yesterday. I would have called that out. But you got to like the follow through today. I just saw that the IYT was up 1.3%. So I was like, thought I would check in on it. VIX down. VIX down. Pretty much feeling this gap that we had from last Thursday. Okay. We'll see what happens tomorrow and Thursday on uh, VIX and volatility. DXY dollar index dropping. Sitting right on top of that 20. Probably going to be a choppy November or so. Maybe a, a substantial pullback. Rest, settle. We had a pretty strong October. It was either that or October was a really strong snapback. Uh, from the breakdown that we had from pretty much the summer. Either way, I don't I don't really have an, an opinion right there, right now. GLD Gold Trust. I'd still just want to be bullish on any kind of dip buying opportunities on gold for now. I think it's starting to get a little bit ahead of itself. 10-year yield. Ooh, yields are pushing higher. Uh, so, yeah, we get that huge gap down yesterday on yields. Uh, this is across the yield curve, too. Uh, seeing that continuation higher, we'll see. I mean, it looks it looks pretty good today. Find out tomorrow, right? We're going to get FOMC tomorrow afternoon. Uh, 10 2 inversion, kind of flat, not doing a whole lot. HYG, high yield corporate bonds. Trying to throw an upper wick, trying to retest. This could be possibly a little, little double top kind of coming in here over the past couple weeks. We got a little top here rolled over. Possibly top here into the moving averages again. Uh, the way yields are moving higher today, bond prices um, might not be looking all that great. But yeah, LQD kind of retests into the downtrending moving averages. Same thing here with the TLT. Now, the TLT's got multiple days here kind of consolidating outside of this kind of wipeout that it had on Friday. Uh, we've had multiple days kind of consolidating here. Past two and a half three weeks i mean it's basically been here around the 91.50 to 92.8 level so yeah that's i mean that's a pretty good amount of consolidation so if we break back down again even though we did it this past friday probably gonna go at that point in time as far as sector performance on the day we got healthcare lagging behind a little bit materials staples real estate utilities financials energies and communications okay tech is outperforming on the day as well as health uh, discretionaries and industrials as far as intraday real estate industrials leading the day intraday discretionaries utilities Doing pretty good intraday. Materials kind of in line with the market right there. And we got healthcare, staples, tech, financials, communications, and energy at the lower end of the intraday price action. 